Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. This is Getting Started with MIDI Programming Part 1. I created this video because I have a feeling that some of you who watch my tutorials or reviews might feel a little lost when I use certain terminology or skip over some common steps in my guides because I assume you already know what I'm talking about. If you're that person who is just getting started and want to get caught up, this may be the right video for you. Please make yourself a cup of coffee, tea, or whiskey, I don't care. Grab a notebook and get ready to learn. So what is MIDI? I won't be the first to say this, but I should start with what MIDI is not. MIDI is not sound. There are no MIDI sounds. It drives me a little nuts when I hear people say, oh, that doesn't sound real. It sounds like MIDI instruments. I understand what they're trying to say, but it's just technically wrong sort of like the name of my channel. MIDI, which stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, is a protocol or a system of instructions for sending commands to musical hardware or software. In other words, it's a language to communicate with music programs. In relation to virtual instruments, which are called VIs, not VSTs, the aim of MIDI is to control the instrument in such a way to produce a certain sound. Simple, right? Here is a trumpet VI made by audio modeling. When I press a C on my keyboard, that key press is turned into an electrical signal that is turned into a command your software will understand. The most basic command your VI understands is no on and no off. If your VI detects no on, it will trigger that sound. However, things can get a little complicated with sophisticated virtual instruments like this one. Swamp Trumpet, for example, is capable of playing a wide range of notes at different intensities, otherwise known as dynamics. It can also play vibrato. It can also growl. How do you control all of these elements? Every little element of an instrument's performance is called a parameter. MIDI allows you to control those parameters. Often your VI's parameters will be displayed as a knob, a fader, a toggle slide, a button, or a key switch. Some parameters are special, like pitch bend or sustain, which I'll cover in a bit. So how do you control a parameter? Let me show you. In Swam Trumpet, for example, one of the most used parameters is expression. Expression commonly refers to the dynamic level of the instrument, how intense it is playing. As a side note, some plugins use expression to control volume, but for now we'll stick to dynamic. For these types of parameters, there are 128 values shown as 0 through 127. Usually 0 is the lowest value and 127 is the highest value. How do you control that number? For a parameter like expression, you'll find that most instruments have it assigned to CC number 11 by default. This is because expression is often controlled by an expression pedal, which just happens to be assigned to that number. Okay, what is a CC number? CC stands for Control Change or Continuous Controller. Either way, it's a type of channel voice message that allows you to control a parameter from your hardware or your DAW. I'm going to show you how to control it in your DAW. In Cubase, I'm going to start by creating an empty MIDI region which is a field where you can create notes, rhythm, and parameter changes. Right now, there is no information within it. To start programming music, I can double-click on this region, which will open up my piano roll. A piano roll is a window that contains a vertical view of your piano and a horizontal view of time, basically a representation of notes and rhythm. In my DAW, the darker region is a total area of the MIDI region I'm working in. I'm going to create a note that spans across two measures. When I play it back, I will hear my note at its default dynamic level. Just as a reminder, some VIs have a default level of zero, so the expression level will have to be set above zero to hear anything. Some DAWs have easy access to parameter lanes. Parameter lanes are sort of like tracks for your parameters. In Cubase, this is found right below the piano roll keybed. I can open it up by showing it. Right now it's showing me the velocity lane. That is not the parameter I wish to use. So I'm going to look for it by clicking on the parameter name. 
Now a drop-down menu shows me my options. It may be different in your DAW. Logic, for example, opens it up by pressing A on your computer keyboard. In FL Studio, I believe you have to type it in in the browser window. Now I'll click on Expression. And that is CC11. Remember that the values range from 0 to 127. So if I click on any space within this expression lane, I need to make sure I have my pencil tool, it will set some value to my expression parameter. Notice that Cubase not only tells me the measure, beat, and tick I'm starting on, but it tells me the expression value, which right now is 86. Let's hear how that sounds. Let's hear what happens when we drag it down to a low number like 25. Now we can hear a soft dynamic. I know this sounds like I'm promoting Cubase, but I love the fact that you can click on the point that you created and type in those values up here in the value window. Let's set it to 120. Now we get a loud dynamic. But the cool thing about CC values is that they can be manipulated to change over time and using different types of curves. Some DAWs let you pencil it in like this and also give you a more controlled form of editing. For example, if I want to begin this note softly and then reach its loud dynamic level by the end of it, I have to create two points, one at the beginning and one at the end. I'll now click and drag this point to low value, let's say 20. And the last point, I'll set it to 110. Now we have a small problem. The value is static and doesn't go to the loud dynamic until the note is finished playing. While in Cubase and other DAWs, if you hover over the center of the expression line, you will see a little node appear that you can click and drag up or down. This will create a curve which will give you a smooth transition to the second value. Now I have created a crescendo, which is a soft to loud dynamic change. Let's hear how it sounds. That sounds pretty cool. Now let's say I want to add vibrato, which is the modulating sound an instrument makes when you slightly vary the pitch and volume. In many VIs, vibrato is assigned to the modulation wheel or mod wheel. Modulation is assigned to CC number one by default. Let's open up that lane and program in some vibrato. Like expression, its values range from 0 to 127. I want to start this with vibrato and end with no vibrato. So again, I'll create a start and end point. In this case, I don't really need to span the length of the note. I'll end halfway. Then I'll set my curve and then listen. If you don't like the way it sounds, this is where you'll spend some time tweaking the parameters. Over time, if you do it enough, you'll know what it will sound like before you even set your values. I don't like how it sounds, so I'm going to try adding more vibrato at the end rather than the beginning. That sounds much better to me. Some parameters work differently than others. For example, pitch bend does not have values from 0 to 127. If you have a MIDI keyboard, the mod wheel is rolled to the lowest level and you can roll it upward. This corresponds to its MIDI values 0 to 127. However, the pitch bend wheel, which is to the left of it, is self centering. Because you have to be able to bend the pitch upward and downward. Because of this, it requires a special type of value. Pitch bend is not assigned to a CC number, but it has its own special pitch bend lane with a value range of 16,384 numbers. When centered, the value is zero. When all the way down, its value is negative 8,192. 
most of the time this will bend your note down a whole step or whole tone. And the highest value is 8,191, which will bend your note up a whole step or whole tone. So why is this value so much higher than modulation and expression? Because pitch requires finer adjustments, and if it was limited to 128 levels like the others, you would likely hear a pitch bend as a series of micro steps. 16,384 levels sounds a lot smoother to the ears than 128. Let's start from the center and bend this note upward halfway through the first measure. Now, most VIs have the default maximum note bend range as two half steps or semitones, but Swam Trumpet happens to make it an octave or 12 half steps because it requires it to make falls and doits. So this is going to sound like it's going up one octave. Now let's make it go all the way down. And then back up. The next most common type of parameter is sustain, and it is assigned to CC number 64. It also has a value range of 0 through 127. But it usually works differently than expression and modulation. Let me explain. With the exception of professional piano VIs like this one that offer half pedaling, most piano VIs and other instruments require only an on and off command for sustain, not different levels. Sustain pedals sustain the notes that are played while depressing the pedal. This is also useful for other instruments like guitar or harp. But because the other instruments don't use half pedaling like a real piano, they only require an on or off command to sustain. If you want to add a sustain command, you have to set the sustain value above a certain point to enable it and below a certain point to disable it. Let me create some notes so you can hear this in action. For this, I'll use the guitar. This is without sustain. Let me open up the sustain lane. So since 64 is the halfway point between 0 and 127, anything above 64 will enable sustain. If I want to turn it off, I have to set my value below. Now it's most common to set your sustain as low as you can to turn it off rather than just below 64 or above 64. And it's more common to set it all the way up in order to enable it. Another value you should be aware of is velocity. Velocity has nothing to do with the speed of your plane or the speed of the rhythm, but rather the speed of the depression of the note. In the DAW, it simply represents a value of intensity. Velocity has its own lane, just like pitch bend. Usually, it will represent every note as a vertical line or column. The value range for velocity is 0 through 127. In almost all cases, velocity corresponds to dynamics as well. The lower the value, the lower the dynamic. The higher the value, the higher the dynamic. So why use velocity if you can use expression? Well, it depends on the instrument type or style of playing. For example, when you hit a piano key, that note has a certain velocity. You might program a loud note like this. Well, that note isn't going to get any louder over time, even if you change the expression, because some instruments can't change the dynamic level of one note. Think of a single acoustic guitar pluck or a harp or a xylophone hit. Once the instrument has sounded, you cannot make that note louder. The only way to make it louder is for the next note to be louder.
Conversely, an instrument that uses breath or bow can get louder over time with increased pressure. These types of instruments like brass, woodwind, or strings can take advantage of expression. That being said, there are times when instruments that use expression can take advantage of velocity. For example, if I play staccato notes on violin, those are short notes. I can have better control of each note's volume by using velocity instead of expression. Which is better suited for long notes or groups of notes. Those were the most common parameters. If your instrument is sophisticated, it will have many other parameters which are less common. These can be assigned to a CC number of your choice. You can achieve this two ways. You can either type in an unassigned CC number in that parameter setting window, for example, breath noise. I'm going to assign it to CC number 16. Or if you have a MIDI controller, like a MIDI keyboard, you can check to see if your VI's parameter has a MIDI learn feature. Once you click learn MIDI, the computer will wait for MIDI input. It will then detect what knob or fader it's coming from on your device and then assign that parameter to it. In this case, it detected me moving the knob on my keyboard and assigned it to CC number 16. This was part one of my getting started with MIDI programming tutorial. I'll be posting part two soon. Please let me know if this was helpful to you and if there is any general information you wish me to cover. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with my latest videos. If you think I did a great job explaining this, Hit that like button and leave a comment below tell me what you thought of this tutorial. Thanks for watching.